Let's look at this. Here is the cosecant graph, right? Let's just look at the cosecant graph. Y equals cosecant of x. As we discussed over there, the asymptotes occur at x equals pi n. Correct? Yes? Now we talked about, again, guys, if there's transformations outside of the function, that's not going to affect the asymptotes or the uh, domain. Or the domain, well, yeah, the domain, right? Because if you're stretching or compressing, moving the graph up or down, stretch, compress, that's not going to affect them. Correct? OK. So we look at this and then we say, well, here we have some transformations. Now, before we even get any further, let's actually identify these transformations. So let's put this into our correct format. So that means we need to factor out a 4. Now, since this is not the first time I have done this, I'm not going to fully explain again, because we know we're just factoring out the 4. If you want to check my work, multiply it back, right? So we can see there is a horizontal compression of 4 and a horizontal shift of pi over 4 to the right. Right? So we could say the phase shift is pi over 4 right. And we could say the period has been changed because the period was originally 2 pi, but now the period is 2 pi divided by b, right? Which is pi halves. So what that means, guys, is again, this graph, instead of it taking going from 0 to 2 pi to repeat, it now completes its cycle. within pi halves. That's what the graph now looks like. It just got compressed from 2 pi to pi halves. Now, let's actually graph what the, let's graph the cosecant function. You're going to have some reciprocal properties here. We're going to have an asymptote at pi halves. We have an asymptote here. And we'd still have an asymptote there. But do you guys see how that compression Shrink the graph, right? Yes. So, so you have an asymptote pi halves, correct? What is that other asymptote? Would it be a 2 pi over 4? It... Here? Yeah. Let's figure it out. Okay. Now, again, also remember this graph got shifted pi over 4 to the right, which I'm not representing here. I'm just representing the compression. Okay. But I want to kind of talk like we're going to talk about that here in a second. So what we want to do, guys, is if we know the asymptote of cosecant with no changes inside is pi n, well, then what we're going to want to do is just represent the changes set the changes equal to your asymptote equation. Because those are what's affecting the graph, the compression as well as the shift. Does that make sense? Because it's on your quiz. So falling asleep probably won't help, right? So now we just go ahead and solve for x. So we divide by 4, divide by 4. x minus pi over 4 is equal to pi n over 4. And then we add pi over 4. Add pi over 4. So our asymptote equation is x equals pi over 4 plus pi over 4n. Now, that is correct, but that's probably not what you guys would see in a multiple choice question answer, because that's not really our simplified answer. Does anybody know what a more simplified answer would be for that? Pi over 4n. Yeah, just x equals pi over 4n. Because think of, look at this, guys. Watch. Look, look, look. Obviously, guys, if this gets split in half, that's pi over 4. The asymptote occurs at pi over 4. Now, again, what was this transformation that got happened? This graph got shifted what? Pi over 4 to the right. So as I shift this graph pi over 4 to the right, are the asymptotes actually changing? No, right? So that's nice. That, so one thing, the shift actually isn't affecting the transformations. So this extra pi over 4 is really meaningless. It's not affecting, like, and the same thing, just like I did over there, can I still get, using this equation or using this equation, can I still get the asymptotes of 0, pi over 4, Pi halves? Yeah, right? It doesn't matter which one you see, but this would be the simplified version that you guys would expect. OK? Anybody have any last medicine questions or want to get a drink of water to stay awake? No?